Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you guys is this, the following, uh, and this is important. Gentlemen, listen. Um, first off, I want to thank S. Jock for coming through in the cash app and for sending those links. I'll get to them and try to cover some of them as quickly as I can, but it's, it's a lot. Um, I want to thank uh, um, Cortez for sending the stuff he has. The links, I mean, but we're really tied up at this point at the job and I only got time right now to record because I had to cancel class four meeting. It's not my fault. I'm not in trouble for canceling the class. But then after I canceled it, I found out that a few minutes before that, an email was sent that the meeting was canceled. So now I'm like, OK, I got now I got this block of time and I still have something I need to be doing. But I figured I would try to belt this one out right quick for your benefit. Two things. Number one, gentlemen. Um, it is too late in terms of the race saving and you know saving the unmixed form of black folks is, is too late it's not wrong you, it, you get to choose what your kids are going to look like to a certain extent um, but it's not going to be as easy as it would have been just a few years ago as the American sister's attitude has turned worse um, to the point where you've got a content creative dancing and twerking on some strange dude and the son having to come in and push them apart and, and him being broken by this and his mother's reaction being one of which your problem and everybody sees us on camera well, that's a pretty bad sign and that's a pretty bad low. These things have gone on before, but now we see it being recorded and then republicized and it's desensitizing a lot of us. And so the society reaches a new low because of these things. But when you get to that particular point, you got to realize, guys, this does something to the image of black women in general, because number one, you got the Western black woman. And she leaves with the attitude in the mouth and the neck rolling, finger snapping and can't tell her nothing, but also making the most demands. She leads in that. But then you also have a situation where you've got the um, the sister back home. Johannesburg, Nairobi, Lagos, spe specific areas, apparently Luanda. Shouts out to Igor Mendonca, who has uh, left comments and explained a lot. And notice I'm mentioning cities, not their whole countries, but cities. They are willing to follow what they see on the television. The Anglophone Americas is already bad. The Trini woman's got a bad, nasty, filthy, stank, funky attitude. And they got the colorism to go along with it. The Jamaican woman's got it. The Bahamian woman's got it. They just feel pretty. I mean, they feel like it is their duty to commit paternity fraud and disrespect normal men. And you know, what I mean, they act like that's, that's what they're supposed to do. They act like this. You know, you know what? That's that's my job. I'm, I'm supposed to just give you the roughest time. And. You know, there, there are times where sometimes you got even Wyatt women to tell their little girls, listen, your job is to find a man who is happy and ruin that. To them, it's more of a joke that they'll actually enact in seriousness. Whereas for sisters, that's not even a joke. No, that's real. Why should you be happy? That ain't real life. You sit them say, why does the suffering so damn necessary? That's just the way it is. OK, God have mercy. That's just the way it is as long as they're profiting at your expense. It, you see, you have to understand that they want you to suffer and the sisters back home on the continent are developing the same mindset in certain cities and it's going to spread from these cities outward. You have ratchet business in Lagos. You got it now, but it, Abuja, which is a much shorter train ride or plane ride from the Muslim North, has also become the place to which Northern women can go when they just want to wow the uck fout. It's gotten to that point. They just want to wild out, no discipline. Now look. They don't have to go through El Abuja to Lagos to do that. They can go to Abuja. And the North, 
they can't escape the consequences of it. But in Abuja, they do it and there are no consequences. That's before you get to Lagos. Don't get me started on Lagos. But they're willing to take on these bad things and these bad habits that you can see. Another Creole brother who has left and is also living in West Africa and is not Nigeria, but does live in a major city, has caught one of his fiancés listening to Derek Jackson and Shira Seven. He about to put her out. But that's the issue. She found them. The continent is actually under attack from this misandry. What this is going to do, though, is sadly, this is going to turn a lot of brothers against. I mean, it's already working. It's already going to turn a lot of these younger black men against black women categorically, racially, not just geographically. You look at that young brother who's a minor, maybe nine or ten, who had to step in and push that dude and his mother apart from each other because she was going to dance or twerking on this dude on camera. He was hurt. When you look at that young brother and he's nine or ten, what the hell do you think is going to be the case when he gets older and he remembers his mama's smirk looking at him like, oh, what's wrong with you? And that's his mama. What do you think is going to go through his mind? He's already in the States where for him to get with a sister, he can't find one without the attitude unless she's ugly. Or maybe she's got somebody else's kids or herpes and even then she's probably likely to have an attitude. Then what? If he doesn't become a traveling man, then that wide woman's going to win out by default because she doesn't start off with that much attitude right off the bat when it's a brother. She does that to her own man. What's going to happen then? And see, I know that it takes brothers time to get the money together and be able to travel and get the tickets. I know that. But in the meantime, because brothers do go older mentally and physically because we're human, because we're biological creatures. The thing is that there are certain things that happen. And certain things become irreversible. Some damage that you may have suffered or some shock, let's just say a shock, a mild discomfort, but not fully trauma that you suffered again and again at age 16 may not be permanent if you can get away from it by 18. But then at age 24, you're still having to deal with this and you're not able to leave the States until age 37. Some of the damage is going to be permanent. Believe you me, I know. I was in my late 30s when I left the States. There are occasions where I have to remind myself that my wife is not playing a game. And she's not, but at just times I got to remind myself because I, I came up where they're always playing games, especially if they're cute. It's always a game with them. It's always a manipulation tactic. Crap testing. It's always like that. That's how I came up. It was never anything different other than that. It was always that, that and that alone. Crap testing, manipulation, crying, tears, wham. Being needy not being willing to tolerate these same things in men barely even being willing to tolerate human limitations i've yet dealt with all that stuff and sometimes i have to remind myself that's not what she's doing i can see the difference but i may have to remind myself of what that difference is that happens you know Because you got sisters on the continent that are willing to take this on. That is going to ruin a lot of brothers. IBMOR 
is going what mark my words and i'm not rejoicing in this ibm or is going to be phased out by age i'm not happy about it it's a prediction that i don't want to come true but that's where we're headed now at this point because these younger brothers are not going to want black women and unfortunately they're going to those who do are going to be associated with a certain type of dysfunction. That's already happening. You already got some young brothers who, if they are into sisters, they're also into the dysfunction because they don't know anything else. Does it mean that they're black women that ain't dysfunctional? Yeah, but they, you know what they do. They don't go after any men. They don't try at all. They don't try to compete. They try not to compete. They sit back and they revel in not being the ratchet bitch. And then think that all the men are supposed to go up to them and approach them. And then later on, they're the ones who sit back and say, hoes are winning because, you know, the hoe is actually willing to go and get somebody because she's looking for a victim, like a prey. As a predator looks for a prey animal. And she was willing to sit back and actually wait for these these men who were consistently being stabbed and hurt and shocked and electrocuted and told to fade the stuck away. These men, she's waiting on to just go ahead and, and walk up to her. Meanwhile, he can't see her because he's been told, respect boundaries, don't say anything. And then the women that come to him, as I stated, they're predators and they're looking for prey. And he doesn't get to learn that there are women that are not looking for prey because those women won't say anything at all. A lot of brothers, white and black and every, everything else alike in the West, are only being cho they're only being shown choosing signals because of what these ladies can take from them. It ain't about them. And they learn this, they, they don't know what it is, but they're seeing this again and again and again because, you know, the women that ain't looking to exploit won't even show choosing signals even if they like him. The problem is that when women are well behaved in the West, which some are, they think they're too good to even show a choosing signal even when they want to. And that's not what the hell we do here. And so these guys, they get to their, you know, they get up into the late 20s. By then, pretty much some of that damage is permanent. Not only that, you have to add in to that the economic and financial hardships of the West to which they've had to navigate and go and that kept them from leaving earlier and younger than they did. I'm going to state this too. Um... That's what it is. That That's why I said that IBMR is going to be phased out. These younger brothers are looking at black women and saying, I don't want them. It's not, uh, uh, they're not born this way, but I mean, let's see what's happening. I mean, their moms are traumatizing them. And with the emotionalism that sisters have, that's further trauma to the kid. You see, even black women that are covered and aren't completely stressed, you notice that when they're correcting a child, they say, don't sit there and just look at me like you stupid. So then the child looks down. Look at me. That When you're in trouble as a kid, you're in trouble for what you did. You're supposed to be in trouble for what you did wrong. But you're not supposed to be in trouble now for how you look because she's already angry at you about something else. You could have a blank facial expression. Don't look at me like that. You could have a hurt facial expression like, you know what, I know I was wrong. Oh, don't put on that pitiful face. You know what you did. It's that type of thing. But then stretch that out over the years and it never stops. Oh my God. Black women with a covering can really ruin you. They can ruin you from childhood and it won't necessarily be because they don't love you. It can just be some of that backwoods plantation nigga trauma they love to bring and then push forward as culture. Newsflash, we're not allowed to pass these things on. If we men were doing that, they would say it's toxic and they would have gotten rid of it. We were never allowed to pass on this stuff.
And some of us do sit up and say things like, well, you know, um, uh, some men, some of the older men who are not red pillar, well, will sit up and say things like, well, you know, don't ever turn down no trim. There are dudes out there that are like that. Now, you know, sisters may not like that per se, or they act like they don't like that, but they know that if that gets into the minds of their sons, it gives women in general more control over them, over the sons. And they're women that want that to be the case because if they actually do sit down and think ahead, they start thinking if these men realize what we're up to, they, will, they we don't have a retirement plan, even in our own sons. Don't believe him? Turn around and tell these women, listen, we meant to the young brothers to not go that route. We mentor the young brothers to have standards. But not just in a way that sounds good. We mentor them to actually have standards similar to the way that women have standards. They're going to start twisting your words around. So you telling them to act like women? How's that going to work? See, I didn't say that. They'll quit listening and they won't take you. They won't take their sons there. Better yet, tell them, listen, we tell the young men to have stands, but we also tell them the games that bad women will play. And we tell them the things that women want them to know, but don't feel comfortable explaining. So we'll do that for them. Oh, my God. Now, see, that's the one thing they hate even worse. You be one of them brothers that that, that, that sounds like he sits up on the corner somewhere. Yeah, man, don't never run away from no trim. And she'd be like, don't listen to him. He an old fool. But you be one of those guys that starts talking some sense. Listen, yo, man, I'm going to tell you now, you got every right to be careful about where you stick it. As a matter of fact, demand marriage. If she don't qualify for marriage, don't give her nothing else. And by the way, there are things they want you to know, but they ain't going to never tell you. You start telling them that, that gets a worse reaction from them than being that drunk on the corner telling, hey, young blood, don't never turn down no trim. Don't never be scared of no punani. Which one do you think they're going to react to worse? We've already seen it. They live in communities where you got a bum on the corner telling young brothers that, and they never move. Could they get those men canceled and arrested? Yeah, they could. They don't do that, though. But you be one of them brothers that starts telling these young brothers, oh, you were insult, and they try to get you canceled. And then the next thing they start up with is false accusations. Formally. That's what they do. What does that tell you? And young brothers are going to start to see this and they're going to say, man, the hell with this. To hell with this. You already got a scenario where um, some of the ones that are teens now have looked at some that are now in their 20s, but 10 years ago they were in their teens or preteens and how they acted. Because remember, those things are actually on, I mean, they're still on videos that circulate nowadays. We can get on there and see videos from 10 years ago, stupid stuff people did, teenagers rapping 9AY type lyrics about how they duck sick, and these are dudes. Some of that stuff is from 10 to seven years ago, and guess what? You can still log on and you might, certain places you may be able to find that, certainly YouTube, well, what does that tell you? You got cats that are now in their teens. They see these videos and they're saying, well, I mean, yeah, I saw this a long time ago, but look at them. That's what these sisters raised. I don't want none of them. So pretty much what I'm getting at is that the sectors of the black manosphere that still wanted to keep it black, just not Western, are going to be phased out. They're going to be outgrown. I don't want it to be the case. I just know it is. And I want to repeat what accountability commentary has said to us. You may have to leave Keisha. But Becky ain't on it either. Becky's just a little nicer for a little longer, but she'll do that same stuff. Grace Jabari, anybody? And by the way, apparently she's Iranian. Now, Jonathan Majors ain't Muslim. So why is a maybe Muslim woman 
with a non-Muslim man in the first place? Do you think, and I don't know Grace's parentage completely. I assume that the dad is the one from Iran. But the point I'm making is that if Grace was introduced to that side of the family and at least nominally was Muslim, do you think that she compromised that part of her faith because it was cool to do with black folks or because it seemed like the smart thing to do in white circles? Be honest. She let them coach her to tell them that he put hands on her. Now let's look at Megan Good. She's putting that investment in and that's fine. They may be good for each other, but let's be honest with ourselves. What was wrong with the pastor? What was wrong with, with the pastor, Devin Franklin? To me, we don't agree on religion, but what did she find wrong with that man that she left? What's the issue? Next, the other thing to understand is um, we have to be honest with ourselves. If she now was an age at which she was when she married Devin Franklin, would she be standing by Jonathan Majors? Now, I don't hate Megan Good. She doesn't pay my bills. I just understand that we have to ask that particular question. We have to because it's the West and they have it in their mind. You don't do certain things for men. It, it You know, they they actually do live by this code that you find a man who's happy and you ruin it. That's your job. There are those who do live by that. White and black alike. So what I'm saying is that as this continues and as this this becomes more of a fad and more of a trend, at the very least, leave alone them Beckys too. I'm not saying that because of the DNA. I'm saying that because of how they are, what they do, how they're raised, how they think. It just comes out later. The end result is the same. It just takes you longer to get there. I do think that at this point, sisters have insisted upon, they've chosen and insisted and been successful at becoming worse than these Beckys. I do think so. I think one of the reasons why it is that things may be friendlier between Becky and us is because, uh, you know, a sister ain't going to let you use her for them draws, even if she's using you. You're not allowed to do that to her. A Becky may not want you to do that per se, but a Becky will do that to you. And so it just works out. Because it's less insulting to a guy to be used for sex than it is to be used for non-sexual things. Both are insults to me, but most of us will find an insult. Uh, most of us will find an insult in one to be greater than the other. I mean, in all honesty. I'm not different in that regard. I find an insult in both, but if you think you're going to use me for non-sexual stuff, that's even more insulting. I may not agree to let a woman use me just for sex, but I find it insulting if she wants to use me for other things. More insulting. Like, you know what, Broad? You're going to use, no, no, no. You're going to use me for some other stuff. No, that's even more insulting. That pretty much tells me that uh, you don't even see me as a man, and that's not acceptable. So what I tell them is, um, uh, what I'm going to tell you guys also is this. Um, I want you gentlemen, as you're listening and learning, I want you guys to avoid one other thing. As things do get worse in the States, and they are, I don't want you to fall into either extreme. One, uh, thinking you're going to wait until a perfect time to leave. And two, thinking that uh, you can just go anywhere. Just get up and go and that's it. And things are going to work themselves out because you're doing the right thing. So the balance between the two of them is that you look to places where you could go or where there are other brothers in networks. Right now, one of those is Thailand. You've got some brothers that are in Thailand. 
and they're willing to help other brothers out. BMT knows some, um, I forgot the name of another YouTuber, but he stated that they, you, you already got bros in Thailand that are gonna help you out. And that's to get off to a start. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you have to live permanently, but that could be a starting place. You may find that one of the neighboring countries is better for you, more your speed, or just that there are opportunities that are untapped. You may find it, but the point I'm making is that that's what you got. So it may be, you know, if, if you have to just go somewhere, you go somewhere where there's going to be something, some sort of network. Don't go somewhere where um, uh, you don't know anyone at all if you don't know anyone specifically at all then at least reach out to some of these guys that are in thailand and if you can get the ticket at least say well listen I'm, i got the passport and i'm getting the ticket but who should i talk to about adjusting who should i ask questions with and follow around um when i land this way i don't have to come begging y'all later on for help and i can just start off asking for knowledge preemptively you, you may ask that so if you can go to a particular place where you know someone then you do that it is also a good idea to look at uh, uh, places nearby to visit just to visit just to visit if you're going somewhere where you don't know anybody you need to make sure that you are doing that uh, but only as a visit that means you got your return ticket and everything else it's just a visit you do that it's a visit you go somewhere uh, maybe it's nearby and then uh, after you go there and you see the place and maybe you do make some contacts you go elsewhere and if you don't want to go back to the States then at least you're going to another place where you visit you see about making contacts but when you were going to go somewhere to move permanently, you should, if you're going to even scope it out to move permanently, you should go where there is someone that you know or someone that knows someone you know and your mutual um, acquaintance or friend can trust both of you, you can vouch for them. It's the best you can do, but you do that. And um, what you want to avoid doing is just picking a place just picking someplace and just going and you don't know anyone there and but you're going to try to settle there permanently in the short term you want to avoid that my son did not do that he went to a country to which we don't have a connection historically speaking but he went with some people that are from there and they were going back he can trust them how's it going sir yeah good man yeah. so far so good he can trust them and uh so he that's where he went now He's there, they're still in negotiations. Uh, but we'll see what goes on, I don't know. But he and I both have a plan B and a plan C. He did not just up and go somewhere we knows nobody, but that was gonna be his permanent home. But he didn't do that. Now I have, um, uh, I have gone to visit places where I don't know anyone, but it's a visit. I know where I'm going to stay. Uh, and um, I've looked at reviews when I go. So I've done this before. I'll do it again. Um, I did this uh, with um, Oman and I did this in Malaysia and uh, they were beneficial. Um, it helped out. But I met some contacts there, and if I had to go back later to scope them out again, then I could do that. Uh, but you don't just you don't just go without knowing someone, and then you just go, and that's it. You don't do that. That is a no-no. That's out of the question. It is not negotiable. You can visit without knowing someone, and you know it's a visit. If you know someone, you can start with those whom you know or that know someone you know to, to visit scoping it out for a permanent settlement. And you may go visit once 
you know some folks there or you know someone that knows someone you scope it out and then you return later and make it a permanent settlement you can do that but it is very important i know a lot of brothers now were impatient to go and i don't blame you and a lot of other brothers are like man you know you get you can't just you can't just go but you think you have all the time in the world and that's also a, a fallacy neither one is true the truth is on neither extreme the truth is that you must have a plan and you may even want to make an emergency plan you know if things go to hell in a handbasket in the states all of a sudden and it may be temporary if that happens but you don't want to be there temporarily then at least you have a place to which you say well let me go and see if in three months things change <laughs> at least let me see that Maybe you do it that way. You go there for, uh, you know, things got bad, really bad stateside. Um, and you say, well, OK, you know what? Let me at least let me see if I can legally go to Guatemala and sit there. At least look at some places where you could go and you could stay. And don't share this information with men of other races unless they're actually allies to us and you know them individually and you can trust them to fuck the shuck up. If you can't, don't share this with them. If you can't trust them to do that, don't share this with them. I want brothers to be in a good position first because we normally have been slated to be in the worst positions. One of the reasons I don't go to the States to teach is because of exactly that. You know what? Brothers uh, get slated for the worst. Brothers uh, in teaching are, are given the worst places to which to go. And we're sitting up looking like, man, fuck the work that I do that was that bad. I had nothing. You a black male and you straight. They're going to give you the worst classes, the worst kids, but no extra privileges or anything to discipline them. So now you just got the worst kids. And when the kids' behaviors are, uh, are held against the teachers, they're looking at you like, why your class so bad? Bitch, you gave me the worst kids. Well, I mean, you're supposed to be able to control, be able to control them with what? A fire extinguisher? You don't allow corporal punishment, especially from black men. So miss me with that. Well, we're not going to renew your contract. Oh, God. So then you got to go back and look for another job. Yeah, that's part of why black, they couldn't get black men to go into teaching and stay there. I won't go back and teach him. Look, I got one CV. If I were ever forced to go back to the States, God forbid, y'all, I seek refuge from that. But I were forced to go back to the States. My CV would not even show that I was teaching. I wouldn't even have it. They asked me what the hell happened. I'd just be like, I was disabled. And I got this, uh, I got an operation to fix it. But I'd, have, I'd have all kinds of stories. Or be like, look, I just finished rehabilitation. I was in a coma. Word? Yeah, I was in a coma. I had to go through two types of rehabilitation. One, physical to move around, get muscle mass back. And two, I had to be brought up to speed. Fortunately, the technological part wasn't too difficult. But, you know, I mean, and it would be true because I missed a lot of the movies. So I'd be like, you know, I missed a lot of the movies. Um, I'm glad Denzel Washington is still acting. Oh man, you had a dad. Yeah, I know, man. Right, I did. That's what I tell them. Ain't no damn way I'm, you're gonna put me back in a regular run of the mill middle or high school classroom, especially when not with no goddamn seventh grade. They're the worst. And every time I've been in the middle school, it's the seventh grade where they stick me. No exceptions. I was never allowed to be in the middle school without having to teach the seventh grade because nobody else wanted their little stanking asses. Never allowed. They wouldn't even consider it. They look at me like, oh no, that's too easy for that black man. And in my hometown, when I taught for a semester, they tried to set me up. Staff and faculty, about two of them. Or really one I know. The other I think was just foolishly going along with her idea like she was right. But one was definitely trying to set my black ass up. Mr. Black, them students 
of yours are failing. So before you scan that into the system that the state can see, you might want to go ahead and erase some of the answers on the Scantron and replace them with correct answers. And I said, you know, I used to work in Atlanta, but I wasn't teaching in the APS. I wasn't a part of that teaching scandal. But the thing is that if I did something like that, I would get caught cheating for the students. And that would create a scandal here. So I'm not, I, I can't, I can't cheat for them. Besides, the erasure marks are still going to show up. Well, they ain't going to renew your contract if all them kids fail. Yeah, well, then they're not going to renew it. They did not renew my contract. Then later, somebody called me back to ask me if I was willing to take the job in the worst school in my hometown. The worst, where they put the kids that got expelled. They can't sit at home no more. So like, you know, uh, we got to put them somewhere. So here's this school. It's on a landfill, which is polluted. People still get sick working there. And oh, by the way, Mr. Black, we need you to work not on the academic side where they're just failing, but we need you to work on the behavioral side where they're effing animals. <laughs> the F you want me to do. I'm like, so what do y'all do when they get out of control? You, you, you deal with it. We have ways and means and OK, yeah, but what are they? And by the way, are we held accountable for uh, what they do? Well, we expect you to be able to teach the kids in a way that they can learn and pass. Yeah, but do, what are we held to blame if they don't learn what we teach? Well, we OK, see, once they can't say no, then that means that they're, it's out of the question. And that's what I wanted you gentlemen to understand was going to be the case. And that's why it is I'm telling y'all, you know, we don't go back. So when you're saying, okay, I'm not going to go back, I get it, I understand that. But you gotta make plans, maybe even to visit two or three, then you can find out which one is going to be where you would settle. Or it may be that you're going to have to go to where we have some networks in place. It may be you have to start in Colombia because they got enough brothers there, or Brazil, because they got enough there. I'm not gonna say the DR because from what y'all tell me, it's gotten too ghetto, too passport pookish. We don't do that. But, you know, it may be that, uh, or it may be that you have to start in Manila or in Bangkok or Pattaya or Phuket because that's where the bras are. Just as a start, and then you can go from there. That may be what has to be done, but that could be the case. And I'm gonna let, I'm, I'm gonna ask, listen, for some of you brothers that are in Thailand or in the Philippines right now, if my son needed to leave and go elsewhere, would some of you be able to show him, um, would some of y'all be able to meet him um, and then tell him the, the foundation of what he would need to adjust and to scope out at least the neighboring places and see and get off to a good start either there or neighboring by? But could some do that? Could y'all pull that off? I'm, I'll let you uh, tell me in the comments um, because I ain't gonna lie. And some of y'all have a relative or somebody that's coming over here. They will probably be here to teach. But if some of you did and we were in the same region. Yeah, I'll tell them what they need. If I can meet them, I'll meet them. And if I can't, I just have to trade numbers with them or something or telegram handles. And then I would uh, tell them what they need to know from a distance. But I would be willing to do it. And we might actually be able to demonstrate and prove what I'm saying because see the truth be told one of the reasons a lot of brothers can't just get up and go is because guess what they don't know someone that's already there but we can change that and that's why I've talked about this uh, recognizability to each other let's change that up now so anyway I hope that what I've said has been a benefit and thank you for listening again Black heart, black mind, black out. Assalamu alaikum, black heterosexual, non-select male power because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. Thank you for flying again with us on Jet Black Airways where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. And uh, as the plane arrives at the gate, upon exiting the Jet Black aircraft, uh, if you cannot punch the cash app button, that is okay, but then please go to the links in my community tab for the merchandise or a link that has been left underneath the prior two uploads and get some of that merchandise so that we can be recognizable to each other. 
If you do press the cash app button, then please only punch in numbers that are going to be easy for you and that you will not regret later on. Gender justice forever.